Hello and welcome to Diary of a Common Man. This is Salim Lalani. Thank you for joining me once again and thank you so much for your continued good wishes and uh, good wishes for my safety and security and your prayers. These prayers are nothing short of a treasure for me and whether I succeed in my goal or not, I will cherish this for the rest of my life. Thank you. This week, we continue our discussion on Aga Khani rituals that indoctrinate people into believing he is God. But before that, some housekeeping. Firstly, I would like to request all my viewers to send their comments on YouTube instead of WhatsApp or email. This is unless I request an email. Secondly, we now have a volunteer to manage comments on YouTube. A big thank you to Amin Pabani. Now, guys, this Amin Pabani is not an Ismaili anymore. So please do not harass, discriminate, persecute, outcast any Amin Pabani across the world. Apart from the help with managing the uh, comments, I also need help with research and video editing. So if anybody is good in that area and has time and willingness to help me and my cause, please get in touch with me. I will really, really appreciate. Thank you. It is now more than two weeks since Aga Khan Imamat accused me of spreading animosity in the community. When challenged to substantiate, we know they went underground and we also know that they are still underground. But here's some food for thought. Why would a giant hide from a common man? Please send your thoughts on email s underscore lalani at hotmail.com. Remember, email is only to be used for special requests like this, not to make day-to-day -day comments. They should always be made on YouTube. I have received many requests to publish a book on the other side of Aga Khan. I am pleased to advise that I have given my script to a publisher. The book is called Apostate God and it will be on Amazon for you to buy, hopefully by the end of this year. I've also received some requests from Pakistan for an Urdu version of either a book or this series. At this point in time, I have no intention of either publishing a book or the series in Urdu. Last week we discussed Dua Karavi ritual that is confession of sins. This week we will look at more rituals that promote Aga Khan as God. Once the follower participates in Dua Karavi, he becomes part of the congregation and soon someone recites a Ginan declaring Aga Khan as God. And we have spoken about that Ginan so many times, Allah ek kasam sabuka, Allah yehi imam etc. Once this Ginan is over, someone leads the prayers and the Aga Khani prayer is not called a Namaz or a Salat, it is called a Dua. And Dua has six parts to it. In the first part, Aga Khan is introduced as the evidence of Allah's authority on earth. But in the second part, he becomes all-knowing. But how? Let's understand. In the 12th verse of Surah Yasin, in the Quran, Allah says, Verily we shall give life to the dead, and we record that which they send before and that which they leave behind. And all of these things have we vested, all knowledge, in a clear book of evidence. God is talking about a book and record and this book contains all knowledge. Now what does Aga Khan do? In the prayers 
he makes his followers read only the last sentence of this verse the last sentence being we have vested all knowledge in a clear book of evidence now not only incomplete verse is read out but it is mangled the book of knowledge that allah is talking about becomes aga khan the imam therefore the way aga khan is recite this verse of quran is we have vested all knowledge in manifest imam thus aga khan the imam becomes all knowing and according to islam who is all knowing in this part aga khan once again plays god but in his own style to understand the stealth we will need to understand that in the first part of the dua a few verses of surah fatiha are recited and the believer declares in surah fatiha that he only seeks help from god but by the time the third part of the dua comes surah fatiha is forgotten here believer is encouraged to seek help from none other than yes you're right aga khan in this part verse 10 of surah fata is recited and allah says that if anyone should give an oath of allegiance to the prophet it is as if they have given it to allah now aga khan plays the same role as allah does just like allah or god allowed people to give oath of allegiance to the prophet aga khan gives the authority to his mukhi that is his representative to take oath of allegiance on his behalf in this part four verses of surah ikhlas are recited and allah says that he is one he did not beget anyone nor was he begotten and there is none like him but as we have learned so far about aga khan there is more than one god he begets and he is begotten once the prayers conclude someone leads some more prayers of a different kind and these prayers are called tasbih in the tasbih believers pray to aga khan for so many different things forgiveness of sin wealth health spiritual enlightenment security and the list goes on and on and on and it is important to note that allah is not mentioned in these prayers this ritual is a repetition of dua karavi or the forgiveness of sins only this time the believer kneels down in front of the mukhi pays him the money and makes a declaration of sins and receive blessings now these chhatas they come in three varieties guna bakshamni chhata guna is sins bakshamni is forgiveness if you are worried about too many sins you can take guna bakshamni or forgiveness of sins chhata or if you feel that dua karavi was not good enough and all the tasbihs and different things are not enough you can actually participate in uh, guna bakshamni chhata once your sins are forgiven you can accumulate more come back get them forgiven keep repeating the cycle until you are on your death bed now when you get to the death bed don't worry there is a chhata there as well so in case all your chhatas throughout your life and all your prayers and all your whatever uh, was not heard don't worry when you are on your death bed there is also a facility for the chhata it is called mahadan chhata which means maha means great and dan means day so mahadan means the day of judgment or the 
eventual day when you actually die and this charta is your pass to enter the heaven now in case you happen to be a spiritual kind of a person and you've been meditating for years upon years upon years and you're still having difficulty receiving enlightenment or becoming a buddha ruhani roshni chata ruhani roshni means ruhani means spiritual roshni means enlightenment so if you are not getting this spiritual enlightenment this charta is specially made with you in mind ab shafa ab means water and shafa means god intercession now the believer drinks a cup full of this holy water during one of the rituals and this water becomes holy it looks exactly like your normal water that you drink and it even tastes like the water but it is holy because it has been blessed by aga khan quran as we know is a collection of divine revelation to the prophet of islam the prophet recited those verses and then all of all muslims uh, since then recite those verses in their prayers the key word here is recitation everybody recites it but according to aga khani followers aga khan is the only one that speaks the verses or speaks the quran and hence they call him boltu quran boltu means speaking and quran means quran so aga khan is a quran a walking talking quran what does that mean when aga khan meets his followers he addresses them as his spiritual children which obviously means he is the spiritual father now i don't know about my viewer but i have not encountered anyone in my life who calls himself spiritual father of somebody we have heard of gurus and we have heard of so many spiritual leaders but have we ever heard somebody saying i am actually your spiritual father so who or what is a spiritual father my extremely small intelligence would tell me that my spiritual father would be somebody who is responsible for the birth of my spirit correct just like my biological father who is responsible for my physical existence now i will leave it for my reader to draw the inference here again i wonder if mola ali or for that matter the prophet addressed his disciples as spiritual children if not it now seems obvious that aga khan possesses the divinity that mola ali or the prophet himself did not have in other words he is way above the prophet and mola ali and who is about prophet so to conclude aga khan is revered in the jamaat khana as god via ginans via farmans via dua karavi via chata via abeshafa via religious curriculum via library of books via religious discourses and so on and on and on in other words god is everywhere in jamaat khana so i hope those people who have been sending me messages or comments that aga khan is not a god he is an imam i hope i stop getting those comments from here on mushkil means difficulty and mushkil kusha is someone who resolves that difficulty or destroys that difficulty or somebody who doesn't let a difficulty arise in the quran allah says that in the times of difficulty reach out to me but aga khan is believe aga khan is the mushkil kusha so whenever they get in trouble they reach out to aga khan now we must understand that the followers cannot access the mushkil kusha 
he is not accessible but there are so many different ways you can spiritually access him one of them is dua karavi another is mushkil asan tasbi another is mushkil asan mehmani mehmani means a gift and then you have abishafa so and then you also have your meditation yeah so you can call the mushkil kusha in your prayers in your meditation etc but you cannot access him uh, physically uh, and he is not going to come to you physically to protect you individually or as a group now if the difficulty is extreme you can even arrange a special prayer meeting for 7 days these prayers are very intense and the prayer meeting itself is called a satado it goes on for 7 days the entire congregation in one voice prays to aga khan for resolution of that particular difficulty or calamity and aga khan heard those prayers at least once in 1972 aga khan became the imam in 1957 but it was in 1972 that he proved to one and all that he is the mushkil kusha in early 19th century a few aga khanis migrated to africa from india being industrious by nature they did very well financially as they do today not only that they contributed towards the country of their residence in africa and one of those countries was uganda today we're excited to present to you some lesser known facts about the beautiful country of uganda Officially referred to as the Republic of Uganda, Uganda is a landlocked country located in the east central part of Africa. Everybody was happy, but then came 1971. Military commander of the Ugandan army, Idi Amin Dada, unleashed a reign of terror. To start with, he led a coup against President Obote and declared himself the president. people began disappearing political rivals journalists lawyers industrialists ethnic population etc but then came the climax he ordered the expulsion of all asians from uganda these asians included thousands of aga khanis from a prosperous community these aga khanis were now refugees aga khan stepped in he arranged a resettlement of his followers in beautiful canada with the help of his friend prime minister pierre trudeau the father of the current prime minister justin thus he proved to one and all that he is the mushkil kusha the destroyer of difficulties but Six gunmen ambushed a bus and shot dead 46 and injured many many Aga Khanis in 1995 in the city of Karachi. But Mushkil Kusha the Aga Khan condemned the attacks nothing else. In the same year in 1995 another difficulty descended upon Aga Khanis in Salmia Syria Salmia has always been an Ismaili stronghold since the time of Mola Ali Local Ismaili leader of Salmia during the time of distress this leader his name was Haider Al Saleh appealed to who as we speak Aga Khanis still endure atrocities in Syria but no protection was provided by the Mushkil Kusha but don't get him wrong he did promise to 
provide financial assistance to rebuild Syria. As we speak, COVID virus has forced Jamaat Khanas across the world to close down. Not only that, COVID has claimed the lives of hundreds of Aga Khani followers, just like anybody else. My friends, in Syria, in Karachi, and during COVID, no dua karavi, no mushkil asan, no tasbi, no mehmani, no abhishefa, no satado, and no Aga Khan. But you can be rest assured that Jamaat Khanas will be full of believers in the next Satado. Believers that are progressive, believers that are intelligent, and believers who are educated. Aga Khan says he is Ali himself. If that is the case, by default, he is also the leader of the Muslim Ummah or the Shia Muslims. I would like to remind the reader that Imam Ali was not only the first Imam of Shia Muslims, but he was also one of the four rightful caliphs of Islam. All Muslims believe this fact to the day. In 2011, Aga Khan gave an interview to Portugal TV and one of the questions was, what do you think about the discussion in Islam that faith should be personal? It should not be directed by mullahs or imams. It is something between you and your God. And Aga Khan says, and mark these words, Aga Khan, the imam, says every individual is expected to use his intellect, his knowledge to help him understand his faith. That is the way we interpret the faith. So I don't see any conflict there. But the question is, why should there be any interference by agents of God, mullah, imams, etc.? And Aga Khan agrees, there should be no interference. But hang on, he forgot to tell the interviewer that his own system does not work like that. He forgot to tell the interviewer that he himself directs the faith as an Imam, as a God, instead of leaving the individual to sort out their relationship with the Divine. He also forgot to tell the interviewer that he collects money from the followers and my god he also forgot to tell them that his system involves an individual actually praying to him now let's come to the second part of the response aga khan the imam says everyone is expected to use their intelligence to understand the faith again he forgot to tell the interviewer that it is this very intelligence his system will not allow, it will not tolerate. Yes, he will talk about the intellect and faith as being compatible. But in real life, try and ask an intelligible question in the Jamaat Khana. You will be ignored, you will be reported, and you will be looked down upon as if somebody has lost their faith. You cannot question Imam's authority or accountability of money. You could not question Aga Khan 3 and you cannot question Aga Khan 4 in 21st century. You must only believe and do what you are told. It is as simple as that. But then again, in 2015, there was another, another interview. In relation to his wealth, everybody knows he is so rich. Aga Khan was asked this question and in response he says, the basic premise for any wealthy person is to use what they need to live 
in a dignified manner and what you don't need you share with other people now look who is talking in his own example you will know that all you need to live in a dignified manner is a 250 million pound uh, yacht that's all you need a private island in bahamas uh, that's not much is it prestigious real estate throughout the world a few private planes few helicopters an unaccounted amount of cash unaudited cash stashed everywhere that's all you need to live in a dignified manner don't you and aga khan is a very big advocate of peaceful dialogue in case of a conflict i invite any of my viewer to get him to commit to a dialogue i invite i repeat this i invite any of my viewer to get him to commit to a dialogue in relation to hundreds of millions of dollars in cash that he receives get him to commit to a dialogue on his divinity which is insult to islam behind closed doors and if you can get him to commit to a public dialogue to justify his adulterous affairs i am happy to give up my campaign but you know and i know that is not happening dialogue is not happening whether an individual like me or a defector like me rebel like me approaches him whether his murid approaches him whether media approaches him he is not going to have this dialogue full stop because if he does then the whole system crumbles that is not happening so he can talk as much as he wants in relation to having peaceful dialogues but that is not happening but don't forget you should never forget that he is a statue of ethics and pluralism next week we continue our discussion on his highness shah karim al husaini aga khan the 4th until then take care goodbye